Welcome, let's take a look at number two. Chester's churros have a mean calorie amount of 300 calories with a standard deviation of 30 calories. And we will assume calorie amounts are bell-shaped, in other words, normally distributed. So let's write down the parameters of this population of churros. So mu, the population mean 300, standard deviation sigma is 30. And we'll see what that tells us on our bell-shaped distribution. So first though, I just did want to point out here on my smaller bell that the mean does determine the center. So 300 calories. And because calorie amounts are normally distributed, that means that because they are also symmetric shapes that about half of churros have less than 300 calories, about half have more. And most churros are gonna have around 300 with extremes becoming less likely. All right, so if I buy Chester's churro, I should expect it to have around 300 calories. And then we're gonna talk about other ranges of calories by completing the empirical rule for bell-shaped data graph. So the empirical rule for bell-shaped data tells us the mean is at the center of the distribution, so 300. And I'm just gonna label my axis over here. We're keeping track of calories. And if the standard deviation is 30 calories, that's going to represent the spread of the graph. So the sigma, in this case, a distance of 30, so if we add 30 to 300, that will bring me up to 330 calories. And 300 minus 30 would bring me down to 270 calories. And the empirical rule tells us that between those two values, there would be approximately 68% of our data. All right, so we'll fill in just this part B first, the first part, approximately. So what percent of churros have between 270 and 330 calories? That answer would be 68%. All right, so these percentages that we're about to write are the same for any normal distribution when we do this process. So. Let's see for the range of 240 to 360. So on my graph here, if we go another 30 calories up the number line, that would bring me to 360. And if I go down another 30 calories, that brings me down to 240. All right, so between 240 and 360 calories, so that's two standard deviations. So we went from center, one standard deviation, two standard deviations in either direction. So anytime we stay within two standard deviations of the mean, that will contain about 95% of our data. So approximately 95% of his churros will have between 240 and 360 calories. All right, and then finally, my last pair of numbers. So we do this one more time. We go one sigma, two sigma. Now we're gonna go three standard deviations, another 30. So that brings me to 390. Last time adding sigma. And then on the other end, one more time, subtract sigma. So that brings us down to the 210. And that's almost 100% of his churros. When we stay within three standard deviations of the mean, that's approximately 99.7% of churros. So that last blank, 99.7% of churros have between 210 and 390 calories. So if the mean is 300, and the standard deviation is 30, it would be really, really, really unusual to get a churro above 390 because there's so few of them out there. Same on the other end down here. All right, so let's talk about this sentence, a churro with 240 calories is. So what we're after here is 
looking at how many standard deviations a value is from the mean. So here's the mean. In fact, I'll put the mu there. There's the mean. So that value 240, that was one standard deviation, two standard deviations. So it was two standard deviations below the mean. All right, so we'll learn a measure that talks about how many standard deviations a number is from the mean. And we'll return to that in a bit, but we'll do one more thing here with churros. All right, so standard deviation describes the spread of the graph. So what I'm gonna do is move on to a competitor of Chester. So here's the competitor. So, sorry, that's small, the competitor. All right, so a competitor of, Ch competitor of Chester's churro says that their churros also have a mean of 300 calories, but they claim that their calorie content in their churros is more consistent. In other words, not so spread out. So they claim that their standard deviation, instead of being 30 calories, they say for their, their churros, it's only 15. So smaller standard deviation should mean less variation from the mean. So let's compare here. All right, so for Chester, the mean is 300. And for the competitor, the mean is 300. But the standard deviation for Chester, sigma is 30. The competitor says that their standard deviation is only 15. So for Chester, the percent of churros between 270 and 330, that was one standard deviation from the mean, that was 68% of his churros. But now let's look at the percentage for the competitor. So let me draw this picture. All right, so here's my competitor and you're seeing a narrower bell for the competitor because 300 still in the center but now when we move sigma, standard deviation is only 15, not 30. So when we move to the first mark above the mean, so sorry, this is gonna be small, but that's gonna be 315. And then if we go down 15, that brings us to 285. So that's 68% of their churros approximately. So now let's keep going. So if we add another sigma, that brings me to the 330 and subtract uh, sigma, that brings me down to 270. So now because their data is more closely clustered around the mean, because their smaller spread between 270 and 330 is going to be 95% approximately of their churros. So for those same number of calories, the competitor is having 95% of their churros in that range. All right, so the idea here is that standard deviation measures spread. So the more spread out the graph is from the mean, that tells us it's a larger standard deviation. When our bell becomes more narrow and more of the data clusters around the mean, that means it has a smaller standard deviation. Okay. All right, and that ends our Chester Churro example, and we'll revisit churros later again in the semester.